Gracious God, as we enter this new year, we ask for new insight and new hope. As we stand before words of timeless truth, speak, we pray. Amen. The day of Epiphany, technically the day after the twelfth night after Christmas, keep up with that, happens to fall exactly on a Sunday this year. Doesn't happen all that often, but today is actually Epiphany, not just the Sunday closest to it. Epiphany, well, it's a word that means to have a revelation, to see something new, to understand something, to have a realization that the world is changing, or the world isn't the way we thought. We talk about having epiphanies. Well, today, you get to have an epiphany. <laughs> the thing about epiphanies, though, we tend to think of them as these light bulb aha moments. We might hope that they were light bulb aha moments all the time, and sometimes they are. Sometimes they're fast, but sometimes epiphanies can be slow. A gradual realization that things aren't the way I thought they were. Sometimes it's a realization that something is changing in my life, or in the world. And sometimes that's really exciting. Sometimes it's not quite so exciting. <clears throat> Epiphanies, as often as not, can bring fear and foreboding. Oftentimes, it is our response to the epiphany that makes all the difference. I want to tell you about an epiphany I had it's about February of 2016. I can tell you exactly where I was. I was sitting on the couch of our very, very little house. Groomsport. I was sitting on the couch next to my dear wife, and in front of us was the laptop playing a series of videos from the National Health Service about what it meant to be a parent. <laughs> Specifically, how to breastfeed, because the next day we were going to one of the many workshops that our local health service offered on parenting, that one about breastfeeding. In the middle of some video, I honestly don't remember this specific part, I had an epiphany. We were having a baby. <laughs> and not in the, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a dad, isn't that awesome kind of epiphany, but oh, oh, oh what have we done? <laughs> kind of epiphany. That kind of epiphany that settles into your stomach like, like, like a bad holiday that settles in and won't leave you alone, and I will admit, I might have had the teeniest, tiniest bit of a panic attack. <laughs> it wouldn't let me go. For the next five, six hours, I was, well, I didn't sleep that night, to be sure. I know we went to the class, and they told us all sorts of helpful things. No clue what they were. <laughs> because I was like, what have we done? How am I going to take care of this little tiny person? About 36 hours later, I was sitting in the church office for my weekly meeting with Roger, the other pastor. Roger is a very energetic man who whirlwinds in and out of situations, always on his way to doing something. And we talked about the various pastoral concerns and what was going on in the church, and he said, okay, and then he stood up and was out the door and said, um, Roger. And he turned around and he looked at me and he said, oh, <laughs> something's up. I said, yes, maybe. And so he sat down and for the next hour we talked. <clears throat> he said a phrase that has stuck with me. That was the second part of my epiphany. He said, you know, the thing about being a parent, because I was scared and fearful that I wasn't going to be good enough. Maybe there's someone here that can relate to that. 
made me want. I was scared and fearful. He said, you know, Chris, the thing is that being a parent is an undeserved grace from God. None of us are good enough. There's nobody who has all of the skills to be a parent. Yet, and, and still, God keeps making his parents. It's the clearest example of grace that I know. And in that moment, my eyes were lifted up beyond my fear. I was, and still sometimes am, fearful about being a parent, because I know how much it matters. But in that moment, someone helped me have an epiphany that I didn't have to have all the answers. Isaiah says the same thing to the people of Israel who are at the writing of the 60th chapter in a time of deep fear and foreboding. And Isaiah tells them to lift up their eyes for the light is coming and for hope is coming. We turn to Matthew and in this moment of epiphany, the coming of Christ, we see two very different reactions. The reaction of Herod, interestingly enough, the religious insider, who should have known better, who had access to all the teachers and the scribes, reacts in fear. It's not in our reading this week, but we know what happens next in the story, right? Herod is so fearful of this epiphany that Mary and Joseph and Jesus become refugees, fleeing for their life. And the massacre of the innocents happens because Herod is so afraid of the world that's changing around him. But the Magi, the Magi react in hope a hope that they don't even fully understand, a hope that has to be filled in with gaps from people from another religion for them to really get what's going on. <clears throat> but they hope and they follow and they lift up their eyes and they see this star guiding their path. Friends, God's light has come. It's been here for 2,000 years, shining. And little by little, this epiphany keeps breaking forth. Every year, we read this story, and we tell the truth that the world is changing. Maybe it isn't some big aha moment where evil is instantly gone, if it were only the case. No, it is a gradual epiphany, Sunrise after a long stormy night. And we have a choice on how we react. We have the choice to be fearful, to be afraid of how our old life is changing. <clears throat> or we can trust that even though we are far from perfect, that this is God's grace too. We come to the table here in a few minutes, and I encourage you to lift up your eyes as you come. Lift up your eyes in hope, embracing God's revelation in Christ, not just for you, it's certainly for you, but for all of us and from, for all of our world. Because we need all the light we can get. It's very good news indeed, my friends.